you guys. Today I'm going to talk about a long overdue topic which is cleaning and sanitizing your winemaking equipment. And notice I said cleaning and sanitizing. And the reason I say that is because they're really not exactly the same thing. So cleaning is basically just removing any organic solids and films and things off of your equipment, um, be it that they're healthy or not healthy, because you just don't want anything for those microorganisms to feed on when you're storing your equipment. Uh, whereas sanitizing is more of a killing process uh, or like sterilizing where you're just kind of wiping out any leftover yeasts, wild yeasts, or um, just bad bacteria that could have got on that equipment. So first things first uh, is the cleaning, which is the first step of the process. And I always like to clean right away before anything gets a chance to dry on there. It just really makes your life a lot easier, even if at the very least you can just rinse. Um, say you finish a bottle of wine, just rinse it before you, you store it because you just don't want to have to deal with getting that dry stuff off, off if you don't have to. But my favorite cleaner is this stuff here. It's Be Bright. And it includes sodium percarbonate, calcium carbonate, um, salicylic acid, and sodium salt. And the big ingredient there is sodium percarbonate. So when you mix sodium percarbonate with water, it creates hydrogen peroxide. And that's, as we all know, hydrogen peroxide is a really good cleaner. It just kind of helps bubble anything out there, anything stubborn that could have got kind of lodged on your, your pump or your, um, your hose or your carboy or whatever. Uh, so <clears throat> I like to use that. If, if things are especially stubborn, there's some handy little tools. Uh, like this is a carboy brush. Uh, this is a bottle brush, which are just kind of nice things to have. They're really not too expensive either. Um, I always rinse when I use Be Bright, and the reason being is that hydrogen peroxide is just a big no-no for your wine. Um, if you get hydrogen peroxide in your wine, it'll really easily um, just blow those sulfites right out of there. Actually, if you really want to remove sulfites from wine, hydrogen peroxide is the number one way you would do it. Uh, and once it removes the um, the sulfites, it's also just going to start to oxidize your wine. None of us really want any oxidized wine. Um, there's some competitors. I have, there's things called One Step, uh, but again, with all those, it's they're all in the kind of the family of like OxyClean, and they all work really good. But just make sure you rinse when you're using them. Uh, a lot of guys, you'll hear them say to use chlorine to clean, and I would strongly recommend against that. So chlorine, it is a relatively good cleaner. It's a relatively good sanitizer, but in the context of wine, um, it's not a good thing. So TCA, you've all heard of cork taint, which is like a musty smell in wine. When someone says, oh, this wine's corked, and they send it back at the fancy restaurant, um, that's cork taint. Well, the C in TCA, it's, it's trichloroanisole. I might be saying that wrong, but the C in TCA comes from the chlorine. And if you can do everything you can to keep that chlorine out of there, you really um, reduce your chances of creating that compound that creates that musty smell in the wine. So I steer away from, from chlorine. If you can use dechlorinated water, like if you can run one of those under sink filters, that's a pretty good idea too but really just stay away from actual you know chlorine like bleach when I say chlorine so the next thing would be um, sanitizing and sanitizing is there's a couple good ways to do it uh, I like to keep a spray bottle of star sand so this stuff star sand here this is like a lifetime supply basically but one ounce of this stuff, you put it in one gallon of water, it's, it has really no taste to it. Uh, the first ingredient is, I'm not even going to try to say it, but it's an acid. Second ingredient, which is actually the biggest ingredient, is phosph phosphoric acid. But when you mix this in five gallons, you can stick it on your tongue. You can't even taste it, but it just kills just about anything. So, um, good stuff. You don't have to rinse it, which is also good, but I just like to spray it on any of my equipment. Um, 
spray it down my tubes. I keep a one gallon jug of it, so I'll dump these in my carboys and rinse it around. Um, I will dump it in, like funnel it into any bottles before I bottle, rinse those around, and you can basically kind of drain the excess out, but like I said, you don't have to rinse it. Leave it in contact for at the very least one or two minutes, and then you can just go right ahead and fill your wine into those things. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't mention in the cleaning, always make sure you dry your equipment. Set your carboys upside down, leave your bottles upside down. I have a couple videos about some homemade um, bottle and carboy dryers if you look at my um, homemade wine equipment series. The second uh, sterilizer or sanitizer that I keep around is this uh, potassium metabi sulfite and acid mix. So to make this, this is about a quart, um, but I'll add uh, one half teaspoon of potassium metabi sulfite and one teaspoon of citric acid to a quart of water. Uh, you could use tartaric acid, you could use acid blend, but the key is potassium metabisulfite doesn't do a good job at killing things when it's not in a low pH acidic environment. So you just want to add some acid to it to uh, bring that pH way down, give it a heavy dose, dose of sulfite, and it's a pretty, pretty lethal on the little microbes. So keep this in a spray bottle. If you do spray this to clean things, just watch your nose because it smells like burnt matches like no other. It'll about sting your nostrils off if you were to stick your nose in there. But the reason I like this stuff um, is number one, it's dirt cheap. But number two, you know, if I open this carboy here and I take a little sample, I want to sanitize before I put things back together here, but I've also added a bit of oxygen to the environment. So by giving it a little spritz of this SO2 blend, um, I can allow that SO2 to scavenge the oxygen out of that little top little air plug there and just kind of reduce any chances of um, oxidation. So this stuff again, really good stuff. I, I really only keep this in a spray bottle and you're going to want to replenish this. Like I wouldn't leave this for more than about six months or a year because the SO2 over time will kind of oxidize and lose its power. Uh, the other thing, and it's probably the most expensive of all these, is you can also use alcohol uh, as a sanitizer if it's a high enough percentage. So if you live in one of the states where you can get grain alcohol, which is like your 95% nasty stuff that kids drink in college but kind of burns their throat when they do, um, you can also make a spray bottle of that and you can spray your equipment with that to, uh, to clean things. Um, so all relatively simple stuff. Um, I like to keep a plate, so any equipment like what, like a hydrometer, keep a clean plate around, a spoon. You can always set that stuff on a, on the plate and then you're not contaminating it when you're picking it up and setting it down. So pretty simple stuff. Um, if you have any questions about cleaning or you have any novel ways uh, that you think are good ways to clean in the home or you have questions about those ways um, just let me know in the comments and make sure you hit the little subscribe button with and the bell next to it if you want to see more cool videos like this thanks for watching